welcome to the October meeting of the Commission on Aging. Thanks for everybody being here. Uh, we have Cynthia here today instead of Allie. Allie couldn't make it, so Cynthia, thanks so much for being here on behalf of the Human Services Commission. We also have some great news from Sue, which will go to an old business, so that's some good news too. But our opening part of our business is the discussion of the September minutes. Does anybody have any changes to the September minutes? Yes, sir. Yeah, there was, I, I wasn't here, but I... I, I Hold up, full stop. Nope, nope, nope. Not doing that. You're not a member of the commission, so I, okay. can't, I can't have changes to the minutes oh. by a non-member, especially one who wasn't here. Okay. So, Peter, okay. what's he got? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not going to read that. Well, I'm going to point out the error. I'm not sure what the correction is. Okay, let's hear the error. And then we'll let me go. The the that, that, that's perfect. Let's go. Let's go. You, you make a motion well, to amend. I'm okay. Thank my rules you. Of thank you. Exactly. You, you go oh for it. Oh, my gosh. Got enough things to do. <laughs> At Home and Darien handles the applications for private affordable units and human services or the planning department can tell people where the affordable units are located. I think I know the answer, but go ahead, Chris. Tell us what's uh, wrong with that. Uh, that is actually incorrect. incorrect. We do not handle that. Okay. So the, who, d who doesn't handle it? <laughs> there's nobody who handles that. They, they, everybody, everybody's on their own, basically. Okay. So in other words, there's no way of in, an individual, either a Nonprofit like at home in Darien, or the government actually actually has the petition process or the application process. I'm looking at Beth; she's not incorrect. So uh, maybe they can come to at home in Darien, or they can come to some government agency, a Alley or Cynthia, to talk about that issue about what might be available. But there's no petition process for that. If you follow me? They apply actually to online and Imagineers, who yeah. is our the property <coughs> manager of the housing authority um, units, which, which of which Royal is one and the Heights is the other. Sharon, does that give you the info you're looking for? Um, kind of, sort of. Well, what we're basically saying is, is that you should delete the part about at home and Darien being that, okay. right? In other words, they're not. So, however you want to handle that in the minutes to All say. Right. That that portion of the September minutes will be amended, right? Yep. You're good, Chris. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Thank you, Peter, for serving as our <laughs> surrogate. I appreciate that. Any other changes to the September minutes? Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve the September minutes? Thank you, Peter, as, as amended. Second. Thank you, sir. All in favor? Thanks very much, everybody. We'll go right on to our Mather Center report. Beth. Well, we have a great event ha happening today um, with um, Jim Clark. There are still five spaces left if anybody wanted to come. There's uh, 80 folks coming. Um, yeah, so, and we are moving forward. Halloween is coming as well. So there's already, I think, about 80 people signed up for Halloween, and we're going back to the traditional parade, luncheon, and entertainment. We have a great entertainment this year, too, so there's still room there. Uh, the November newsletter should be out on Friday. Uh, we're working hard to get that out as soon as we can because there's a lot going on in November and a lot of programming that's new programming that you're not going to want to miss. So please look out for that. Um, in October also, Jim Himes is coming on October 30th to do a legislative update, but specifically to cover, cover Medicare fraud prevention, Social Security, and health care. So he's coming at 11 o'clock. Uh, we don't get to choose when he comes. So we're advertising, you know, and then he'll be in the cafe and he'll probably speak for at least an hour because he usually does. So uh, just, <laughs> just to prepare you. So he'll be busy from 11 to 12. And he also, his uh, complement of uh, handlers really would like there to be questions. So we're already messaging this out in the constant contact every week. Want to remind people that the constant contact that we send out is only about the next week and some upcoming things that are big in the month because we don't want to inundate people with too many emails. But please look at that because it always gives you the reminder for the week and a lot of folks need reminder. We're also using something called My Senior Center robocalls. So if you get a call from us about a program that you signed up for, we basically say we're calling from the Mather Center to remind you that you signed up for Makeup for Mature Women on October 26th, uh, 22nd with Roby Roberts. So it's that kind of thing. And it's just a reminder, we're, we're finding that that does nicely because a lot of folks will sign in for something 
And even if you do a signing, even on a computer, people just get busy and they get conflated with everything else that they were doing. So we're trying to use the robocall that way. Um, also, we're getting in more programming that does have limitations of the amount of people that can come in. We're still doing Darien residents get a two-week priority and sign up. That's a, one of the reasons why we're trying to get our newsletter out at least two weeks before the next month so people can sign up. And then our non-resident members that are still at our 25%, they get to sign up after, after the fact. So um, there's a lot of good, exciting things happening. So I just wanted to underscore that, that there's other ways that we're communicating now. So if you hear that robocall, it is from us. <laughs> it is from us. Yeah, it's just hang up. Yeah, it's just a friendly reminder, that's all. Questions for Beth? <laughs> Hearing none, good luck with the Halloween program and yeah. everything else. That sounds like fun. Awesome. Uh, Allie couldn't be here for Human Services, but Cynthia Hall is. Thank you, Cynthia, for joining us. Tell us what's going on with Human Services. Well, our next Mental Health First Aid training will be in October 24th and 25th, and this is available for any Darien resident or anyone serving the Darien community, and we will also offer it again in January, and it's at post 53. Um, our renter's rebate program just ended, and I processed 38 applications this year with a total estimated grant amount of $18,989. Nice. So clients should expect the rebate checks by the end of this month or early November. We started energy assistance. So on September 16th, we started taking applications for clients that heat with oil. And on October 15th, we started applications for clients that heat with gas and electric. It is income-based. So for a single person, the maximum income, annual income, is 45,500. We have two protective services cases open. Um, these cases are very time-consuming, um, very complicated for our department. We also have two boarding cases both seniors, and again, they're very, very time consuming and require a lot of sensitivity. Hoarding disorder is a mental health disorder. Our medical loan closet continues to be a great resource for Darien residents. We keep getting very good feedback on the service. And also, um, Human Services continues to maintain the emergency call list with a list of vulnerable seniors and individuals with disabilities in the community. We have close to 100 residents on our list. If you know of anybody that would benefit, from being on our list, please let us know, and we will gladly reach out to them. Thank you. Awesome. Any questions for Cynthia? Do you do you reach out to those on the list, like some with some regularity? You just have a program that says, you know, I haven't talked to. No, this we don't. In a while, or... During COVID, we did. Okay. Yeah, we would reach out to them every once a month, twice a month, mm -hmm. just to make sure you know, we're getting all their needs met. But now, just during storms. Got it. Okay. Other questions for Cynthia? Hearing none, thanks so much. Old business, we have some great news from Sue. Since she brought this to our attention, she should get to share the good news. Go for it. I have been digging um, and I'm happy to announce that Imagineers has decided or it has been deemed that the waiting list for the Royal will be opened. It's been closed since April 2022. Um, so this is a good news, and evidently two units are going to be coming available at the Royal, so um, there is hope for people to um, be able to uh, move there. Um, and, you know, the only other, well, that's, that's the good news. Okay, good. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> we got enough bad news going on between storms and everything else going on. So that's great news. And and Sue, thanks so much for bringing us this 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 to our attention. I'm not saying we push them to to do this, but nevertheless, I'll say it. I think we push them to do this um, based upon our meetings and and the, 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 little, the little nudging. Little nudging helps, and so I think that's where we can be effective as a commission. On local issues especially, uh, state issues of course with Peter, but certainly on local issues where we see something that's slightly amiss or might need to be addressed <coughs> and bring it, to, bring it to this board, like Sue did, okay, allows us to discuss it. Do we want to do something? Yes, we do. Let's get them in here. Let's talk and then see what happens. And I think that that really did have some benefit to our seniors, quite frankly, and to those two people who get to move in there at some point are really blessed. So it's good stuff. Thank you. Good stuff. Awesome. Uh, other old business heading over to Peter. Okay. <clears throat> I got a number of things. Uh, I'm going to start with voting, if I might. Um, 
on the ballot this year is a question, a very simple, clear question, which is should the Constitution be amended to permit the General Assembly to allow each voter to vote by absentee ballot? Uh, it was on 10 years ago in such an obtuse uh, language that it w did not pass. So it's right at the top of the ballot and it's very simple. And I'd encourage yes. And why would I encourage yes? I'd encourage yes because 28 states already have no excuse ballots and have had them for years, absentee ballots. Um, the second thing is... Hold on, hold you on first one. Because I love you, I love that idea. Question. Does the commission feel comfortable, because I certainly second that, okay, taking a position on that absentee ballot? Do people want to discuss that today? From my perspective, God, yes, seniors of all people should want the opportunity to vote by absentee ballot without proving why they can't be in town or anything else like that. If you think about the nature of it, the sheer nature of being someone who is in their own home, who may not have as much accessibility, although at home in Darien will give them such accessibility. Nevertheless, the reality is, is that they may not feel comfortable, but they may very well feel comfortable voting absentee. So from my perspective, this would be a great Commission on Aging position if others feel the same. And I, I would echo that because I'm, I've been a poll worker for years and I've never wanted to work in my district. I wanted to work in others. And so every time I vote, then at work that day, I have to get an absentee ballot myself. Wow. There you go. Perfect example. So, any discussion? Does people feel comfortable <clears throat> making a vote to approve and, and to, to support this this constitutional amendment? Yes, sir. Everybody? Cool? Yeah. Um, I will follow. Peter, do you want to make a motion since this was your your thing? Well, I would I would then move that the commission endorse the question of the absentee ballot on the coming election. Second? Yep, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Thanks so much. We move. On, on go, Peter. The second uh, dimension is early voting. Mm -hmm. uh, and just a little bit of background. Um, eight states have votes now entirely by mail as an option. Uh, you can still vote in person, but California, Colorado, Hawaii, Nevada, Oregon, Utah, Vermont, and Washington have had it, and have had it for years. Um, Early voting this year for us in Connecticut is between October 21st and uh, November the 3rd. And again, um, in 2000, 40% of the voters had access to early voting in this country. In 2024, 97% mm -hmm. had it. And we haven't, but we have it now. So that's a given. Uh, I also went back and looked. The first state to do early voting was 1840. Ohio and Pennsylvania had early voting in 1840. Mm. And California in the modern days started in 1980s. Mm. So I think in this case, our state is finally catching up with most of the other states in the country on early voting. Mm. Um, it puts a burden on our registrar of voters. It puts a burden on those of us that volunteer. Uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, I think we have a very strong team in town that do this. And uh, I believe Corey Freight in our, in our office has forms that people do still want to volunteer or look at, fill out a form and he could let you know. But again, it, it does take uh, time and effort. And again, we have to help them because it's just three people there. So that's really good. Any questions on that? <sighs> Well, let me come uh, briefly into legislative issues. Uh, as we know, the, the, we're kind of in recess until January, if you will, with Newland. But going back and looking at what was left on the table at the end of this year's session, there's some amazing things left on the table, and also some, I think, kind of wild things that passed. For example, uh, there's a new form of cre cremation that passed. In other words, there's a new form of cremation that passed. Um, the thing, a couple of things jumped out at me is municipal agents. So I went back and looked. The municipal agents was established in 1977 and it was amended in 1988, in 1993, in 2001. And in the simplest form, every town has a municipal agent, right? And in our town right now, it's Allie Ramstad. 
But if you look at records and you wanted to find a municipal agent in Darien, guess who you'd probably find in most places? Olive Hauser. Wow. Who was uh, Ali's uh, predecessor by what, five years now, uh, maybe? Seven years. Seven. 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 So the state has mandated that uh, municipal agents be studied, municipal agents be uh, brought up to date, municipal agents be more activated. And I've talked to Ali about this, and it's a very important source of information. Now, we're lucky again in this town because we have terrific human services in the senior center at home in Derry. But let's say you come in from another town uh, in the state, for example, and you're looking for somebody and you don't know the network and you're looking for municipal agents. So that is supposed to be a thrust in, and I believe they have to have the report uh, early next year. So, so that's one thing that's just sitting out there. And again, I think as a commission on aging, we should really, again, encourage that they do something about it. Um, a second, a second thing was, you know, we now have, we have somebody assigned, Claire Cody, and who represents senior centers around the state. Uh, Claire Cody uh, was supposed to have a million dollars to do a orientation, uh, looking at best practices. Well, guess what? The state clawed back that million dollars. The state clawed it back. So you have a person now that's working here, working hard, but she's lost a million dollars of what she was really supposed to do to, to get best practices for senior centers. Again, we've got no problems here, but why can't we share with the other 168 towns, uh, 169 towns, our best practices? So again, I think when opportunity comes when the legislative season is, is relaunched that we, that we focus on some of these things. Um, a third one, and I assume I uh, can certainly talk about it, but they've changed the flight board regulations. I, I, I was going to bring that up after we finished. Okay. Yeah. Because, and I think that's really interesting, and again, it happens. <clears throat> and there was one other, Joe, which I thought, figured you would talk about, which was legal affairs. Connecticut Uniform Trust Decanting Act. Mm -hmm. What the devil is the case? Okay, you ready? All right, you, you asked. Him, so you guys, he's putting me in the weeds. Okay, you ready? Okay, so assume that you formed a trust, okay? And there, it's an irrevocable trust because obviously a revocable trust can be changed. But an irrevocable trust can't be, okay? And let's assume that the purpose of that trust is not really what you want anymore, okay? I'll give you a classic example, okay? Assume for the sake of argument that prior to Donald Trump's election in 2016, you created an irrevocable trust for your kids, okay? <coughs> and you put a lot of assets in that, and now uh, one of your kids has, has some other issues and you're really not comfortable with that anymore. The decanting statute allows you to go into the probate court and try to change or eliminate that trust, okay? Because in some cases, the trust's purpose or the reasons why it was set up aren't, aren't any longer what you want, okay? So the decanting allows you to move it to a new trust, for example, okay? Do whatever else you want to do. But decanting is basically a, a kind word of saying, I kind of would like to make some changes here, and it's irrevocable. So that's what's going on with decanting. Thank you. <laughs> I tried to stay out of the weeds. Yeah. I don't want to go into the weeds on TP79. <laughs> but again, it, under, it underscores the point that these legislative issues have been passed. Uh, those that have been passed have not gotten much daylight. Correct. And those that are sitting on the table uh, continue to sitting on the table. And at least we have a chance to bring them back up. So we don't have to start from scratch. I agree. Okay. Uh, one other. One other subject uh, coming off legislative is that there are three events um, coming up, I think, that are important um, to seniors. Um, and I'm just going to pass this, pass this out. The Darien Public Library next Wednesday, October 23rd, is having a forum. Uh, I'll just pass it down you can see. Um, essentially dealing with isolation and loneliness. And the point here is, um, it's not just for seniors. It's truly intergenerational. It's not just for seniors. Um, and I think, again, take a look at it, 
think about who your contacts are and perhaps encourage some of our younger people. As we know, that loneliness and isolation is such a critical factor for teenagers now and young adults uh, that it needs to get some focus. Uh, the second thing I'm going to pass out is uh, on November the 19th, the Aging Connecticut Summit. And there's just a, a sheet on that and you can go to the website. You know, we did this summit last year, it was the first time, uh, and, and they're doing it again this November. And it's a, it's a great program, it's day long, it's reasonable, it's just far away, it's in uh, Plantsville. Mm -hmm. But again, I encourage some of you, if you had the time to attend, because it really is best practices as, it, for example, human, human services as it, as it relates to housing and other, and other issues. And then the last thing is something that is happening today and tomorrow, uh, and that is um, ARP's um, Livable Communities Workshop. It's, it's free, it's online. There are 2,300 people registered for it. It goes from 1 to 5 today and tomorrow. And I'm going to be on a panel this afternoon, um, the title of which will be Inclusion, the Keystone to Truly Intergenerational Communities. And I'm on there with someone from Bowling Green, Kentucky, and someone uh, from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, you can you just go to the ARP site if you want to do it. You can sit there and look at it. It's free. Great. Uh, we expect probably 50 to 75 people in that Zoom session. Pretty cool. You're you're now the national guy on that thing. Congrats. That's very cool. <laughs> like everything else, I was drafted. <laughs> but that's the point. They knew where you were in Darien, Connecticut to draft you. So that, that is national scope right there. That's great. Good stuff. Any questions for Peter? You're good. <clears throat> awesome. Sue, back to you on blight. Right, blight. Um, there are recent changes to the blight statues. These were the, in the past, um, in the past summer. Um, there the, now is increased authority to levy blight-related fines, and they've been increased to $150 a day for an occupied uh, property and 250 days for a vacant property and $1,000 a day for a property that has three or more Violation. So that is a significant change. And in addition, um, there is now the appointment of a receiver or um, to an abandoned or blight or property property. And this a party can file a petition for the court to appoint a receiver to take possession and undertake rehabilitation of a building within the municipality. And this can include. Um, a building owner, a nearby resident, or at the municipality where in the municipality where the uh, building is located. So these are both quite significant changes. Well, I'm not sure anyone has um, undertaken them yet, but um, <coughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. We've never imposed any fines as far as our blight commission is correct. We have imposed. Oh, we have. Okay. Were those on commercial properties or residential? No, resi only residential. Um, we've, we've discussed commercial, but we have not gotten into the commercial. In fact, there one house on West Avenue um, uh, recently paid the town $47,000. Um, it was a, um, an estate, as it turned out. The um, fellow you know, ignored all of the um, fines and wouldn't respond. He didn't live there. He just collected the mail. And then he passed away and his estate was um, asked to pay the fine, which it did. Amazing. Okay, so the, so this is new information. That is to me, actually, obviously. that's the first <coughs> fine that we've ever collected. Okay. Um, meanwhile, many are accruing, but we hope that they will be resolved before we need to actually um, collect. So. Okay. So, and so I'm going to push back a little bit. So if someone were to rectify the problem, right, mm -hmm. would the blight board then try to collect or would they say we'll try to waive the fine? What would you think? It, it, it depends on the case. Got it. Um, and, and we have recommended, there. I think there are two, at least one property that's been uh, handed over to the board of selection <coughs> that we... Um, 
recommend foreclosure, mm -hmm. and they are the ultimate um, decision makers on that, and I think that's just sitting there, and there's another one that may be recommended, but... Um, so this blight board has some serious authority. I mean, to, well, to re render these kinds of fines and to bring it to the first selectman for foreclosure, that's some serious stuff. Well, there, I mean, they, we, we have no muscle other than that sure. to try and get people to um, you know, improve their properties. But our whole MO is, is to try and work with the, the mm -hmm. um, property owners and try and get things resolved without going down that road. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Enlightening to me. This is, I love these meetings. Every, every one of these meetings I pick up something new that I have no knowledge of. So very interesting. And thanks for being on that board to represent us because, as you point out, the MO is to try to get especially seniors to be able to get the help they need, whether it's from Allie and Cynthia or from other folks, to address these issues before we get to the point of fines. The fact that you're rendering fines on these people suggests there's, as you say, blowing you off. And guess what? Well, then we're going to fine you. And then ultimately we may send you to the Board of Selectmen for foreclosure. I mean, that's the reality. You've got to respond when the government says, hey. Right. Yeah. Very interesting. A, a couple of footnotes. Sure. Uh, and again, a pat on the back to our Blight Board. Uh, commercial properties were, are just recently covered, but we've been we've had it for a while, so we've been in the forefront there. Uh, the other thing I think, and again, goes back to the legislative. Uh, it never covered towns uh, with thirty-five thousand. Only covered towns right. with thirty-five thousand and over. It now covers towns with fifteen thousand mm -hmm. and over, which would include, for example, New Canaan or other towns of our, our town of our size. And, and the third thing, again, what was fascinating to me is that it's not just municipalities that could be uh, receivership, but it could be neighbors, which I <laughs> which I find very strange. The language is there. Yeah, that is amazing. Can yeah, you imagine yeah, but, your yeah. neighbor becoming a receiver? I mean, that that yeah. is just that's that, that is wild. I mean, it's, it's, it's in the states, law. It's a nearby resident. So, right, yeah. right. So I mean, you know, you see something on your neighbor's lawn, and you know, and nothing gets addressed, and ultimately become the receiver to clean it up. I mean, that's that's amazing, right? So yeah, we'll see. I mean, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, exactly. That's my feeling, Peter. I saw that face. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Which is, man, I wouldn't want. No, I'm not going to say it on TV Seven. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, any other questions for Sue on the blight board? Hearing none. Chris, what's going on at at home in Darien? Okay, a couple of things quickly. Um, we are initiating our uh, fall version of their annual appeal, which uh, is critical. We continue to be really primarily almost exclusively funded by the uh, uh, public and that's important for us to continue to provide the service that we do so those uh, those are going out this Friday we have our annual luncheon at the DCA which if uh, anybody hasn't registered here or uh, if anybody hears this before we have 120 people the DCA provides their uh, facility and uh, it's free to everybody lunch and then we have a guest speaker who has some very specific ties to this this committee um, Mr. Etter has uh, has background as do I but more more Peter with the uh, with the author who's written a book about Wait Hoyt uh, a Hall of Fame baseball pitcher who in uh, among other things was with the 1927 Yankees Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, so it's pretty cool. Um, and uh, the author is Tim Manners, and it's a fantastic book. I've heard him already, uh, so we're excited. Um, the, the event that Peter mentioned is particularly uh, nice for us. Uh, they, we've worked with For All Ages, the group who has, and, and Peter spearheaded that, and we have two of our at-home in Darien uh, constituents who will participate on the panel. We've got Jane Matthews, our driver, and um, Liz Pellegrini, who's one of our members, and they will speak to the importance of um, social connection and how do they overcome the, the risk of isolation. So we're very excited about that, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be waiting to see that. Um, a reminder, one of the lesser known uh, services with, with At Home and Darien is our vetted service provider program. And the ability to provide referrals to, to the population for any number of things. And there is a demarcation from when somebody calls and they say, oh, I need a tree removed, to I need something removed, a rug removed. Um, 
so we will gravitate towards trying to get volunteers where we can. And I want to thank John Keating, one of our board members. John Keating uh, provided his, his time, his muscle, and his, his van, his uh, pickup truck. So last week we went to three different seniors' residences, residences and we removed rugs. Uh, John and I brought a uh, treadmill down from the second, second floor, which I think we were both in traction for maybe a day or so. <laughs> um, um, but, uh, you know, so the, the, the initial uh, request is, hey, I've got this, and then we can either point them to a, a uh, provider who can take that tree down, or we'll figure it out to, to help them get out. So I encourage all seniors, if there's anything that needs to be done uh, with the house, to, to please give us a call. Um, and then really the most exciting thing that, that I want to share is in football terms, we've got the football almost at the goal line. We're about to carry it over with the acquisition of a passenger van. And um, I was a guest of the selectmen meeting last week. And uh, one of the questions I think Monica McNally asked was, you know, what do you envision using this for? And the answer was, well, we are nailing the the daytime doctor's appointments and salon and, and shopping. This is really going to help us kind of building on that, that, uh, that session next week, address isolation and loneliness. And one of the things I said to Mon Monica McNally was, well, it's almost an endless list. And I, as I'm sitting here today, wouldn't it be great if the Commission on Aging wanted to go up to that summit? Well, mm -hmm. you know, we would have a van to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Great Island, they, they are going to be challenged with parking spaces. Yeah. So can we be a solution, not only for seniors, but maybe the broader population on a weekend? Mm -hmm. So we're very, very excited about that. And we're really just waiting on the final RTM, hopefully approval, and uh, we'll have that passenger van. So that's interesting. Let me back up on that. RTM approval, <laughs> meaning the town is buying you this van? Or? So, yes. Yeah, so, we are buying the van. Okay. Um, we, we have a great relationship with the town where the town ultimately owns our vehicles. Interesting. Um, primarily insurance purposes. <coughs> yeah. And uh, the, the vehicles fall under the, the town insurance. And we work with the town in terms of maintenance and uh, gasoline we pay. Our drivers are technically town employees, um, which we ultimately pay them back. Sure. Uh, but we are buying it, so the process is the selectmen have to approve that, and then it goes to the RTM. With the concern, I had a call this morning with a member of the RTM, they want to make sure there are no surprises, mm -hmm. so even though we are gifting this to the town, uh, they want to make sure that there are no surprises, that there are hidden costs that are going to be, um, be, uh, be there a you know, month, three months, a year down the road. So, so it's yeah. a new van. Brand new van, right. uh, Ford Transit van, 14 passenger. Wow. Um, driver and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, front seat included, so 14. And we've spent a lot of time working with some of the other local organizations, Get About and New Canaan, and Judy at Get About and New Canaan have been very helpful. They purchased one, so we you know, went and Is saw Is the dealership it. giving you any deal? Um, yeah, they, they are giving Good. us a little bit of a deal. I mean, it, these these vehicles are in high demand. Sure. Hard to come by. Hard to come by. Um, in fact, we're getting from a dealer in Plainville, Connecticut. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, not easy to come by. And the challenge is, if you can't find one that's out somewhere, then you have to order it through Ford, and right. there's a six month plus sure. waiting time. So, m mostly municipalities are are. Are buying these vans, sure. so the one-offs are a little bit of a challenge. But uh, but right, and it's through the donations of the public. Um, we had some restricted donors who have stepped up, and they really wanted to support that. And then um, through our, our our own savings from historic donations. Awesome, fantastic. Questions for Chris? Chris, does it change the licensing of your drivers because it's a bigger van? Do they no, have still F-class endorsement? Still, still yeah. F-class. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is a great question with Spurs. Uh, so we will, we will potentially require some hours from another driver. So if anybody has any, any ideas for somebody who might want to drive evenings or, or <laughs> yeah. Joe, yeah. I got enough on my plate not being a driver of a 14 passenger van. Also, I don't think you want me being a driver of a 14 passenger van. I think people will be terrified the way I drive. So let's not do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, that's really great, Chris. Yeah. It's very exciting about the four. I mean, the, the thoughts that are flowing through my mind, on the, especially on the loneliness thing. I'm thinking of seniors who are Yankees or Mets fans next year, right? To do yeah. a day game. Those Wednesday afternoon games would be amazing to yeah. take seniors to and figure out sponsorship. Because you could buy in the, in the freaking bleachers, right? And they'd be so, people would be so thrilled. I'd be thrilled to go oh, to an afternoon yeah. Mets game or an afternoon Yankees game in the bleachers. Mm -hmm. and that's, just, that's just an awesome idea. I think there's lots of stuff. Yeah. It, you know, th this really comes right back to when we started in Home and Darien uh, and we surveyed all the seniors in town twice. They wanted four things, right? They wanted <coughs> transportation, they wanted uh, the vetted services providers, they wanted help around the house, volunteers, right? And the fourth thing, and again, being a founding member, it surprised me, they did not want events for themselves. Mm. They wanted to be more integrated into the community. Fair enough. They did not say we need more events for ourselves, I, and I'm one of them. But we want to be more into the community with the high schools, and we've done such a great job with musicals and, and yeah. events and the football seniors, for example. And so, to underscore your point, a van would really be a great opportunity as well to satisfy that need. Yeah, big time. Big time. That's a great, such a great thing. It's very exciting to hear about. Good stuff. Hey. Thanks, Chris. Uh, any other old business? Moving on to new business. Does anybody have any new business? I'll give you a slight one, which is I'm going to reach back out to our Parks and Rec director uh, to see if she can now come to us perhaps in November, December, or January. She wanted to push off because when we first approached her in the, in the spring slash summer, she said, I've just gotten here, let me get my feet wet. And I said, okay. So we'll see if we can get her in there. Are there other ideas about speakers? As we know, we had Steve Albany here last week, or last month, I should say. Um, does anybody else think of speakers that you guys would like to hear talk to the Commission on Aging? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we have a new health director, don't we? Okay. Do we? I, yes. Yes. Yeah. I have a, is it a him mm -hmm. or her? Mindy. Mindy. It's Mindy who was Ward Chambrielli, who was the assistant. Now Mindy she's. Chambrielli. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it might be a good idea for her to come in to talk to us. Yeah. Sure. I'll give her a call. A great call. Absolutely. Others. Okay. Keep your keep your uh, as they say listening caps on for folks you think would be great to speak to us um, to be able to give us a better view of of. Uh, corner of Darien we haven't seen or we don't necessarily know as much about as we'd like and those are always very helpful to make sure that we keep our fingers on the pulse of what's going on. Great. Any other new business? Hearing none, can I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you very much, Mary. Second? Peter? Oh, yes? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sorry. Yeah. Right, yeah, no, but maybe it wasn't. All in favor? All right. Thanks, everybody. We will see you in November.